Your e-bike's motor will be limited to the speed that it will assist you too. This being 25 kilometers per hour in Europe and 32 kilometers per hour elsewhere in the world. This is to keep the bike legal and allow you access to the same places that a bicycle has. If you're riding an e-mountain bike on off-road trails and in the places it was designed for, the limiter shouldn't be a problem. However, if you're commuting on flat tarmac roads, yep, it can be a drag and you might need to ask yourself if you've got the right tool for the job, in which case, maybe not. Maybe you should be looking at a higher speed S pedelec for road use. But today, I'm gonna be showing you a load of tips to go above and beyond your speed limiter with ease. Take a look at the trails that you're riding. It is not a road bike and it doesn't pretend to be. It is not the right tool for the job if you're into riding loads of the flat tarmac stuff. However, it is totally at home in terrain like this. It will actually blow your mind as to how capable your e-bike is in the right terrain. And if you're riding it in the right places, you definitely will not notice that limiter. If you find your current motor really hard work above that speed limiter, then it could be time to look in at upgrading your bike. As with everything, technology improves with time. And that's definitely true with e-bike motors. The latest generation of e-bike motors will see you uh, go from assist to non-assisted really smoothly. Some of those older generations of motor felt like you'd maybe stuck it in reverse or chucked an anchor out the back of your backpack. But thankfully those days are gone, meaning that you can easily go above and beyond that speed limiter on those newer motors without needing the legs of Chris Hoy. Once you have momentum in your wheels and have used that assist to get the bike up to speed, then you're actually going to find it quite easy to maintain speed above that speed limiter if you dig that little bit deeper and work a bit harder. This means that you can switch back down from those higher power modes of assist. You just need to focus on being in the right gear and cadence range, much like you'd do on a standard mountain bike. This is a great way of saving battery and getting a great workout too. Now, a lot of people's answer to going faster on their e-bikes is to remove that speed limiter totally. Now, this involves de-restricting the bike. This means that the motor will assist you whatever the speed that you're going. And yes, they can go pretty quick. And yes, it is a lot of fun in the right places. And if you've got access to private land with no public access, then yes, great fun. But if you want to ride your e-bike in the same places that you can ride a bicycle in, then you have to comply with the law. In some countries, if you don't comply with that law and you do de-restrict your e-bike, you can risk imprisonment and huge fine for essentially riding an untaxed, unlicensed uh, vehicle that shouldn't be on the road. Would you do that in a car? If cross-country riding is more your style and you want to get some watt-free miles in your wheels, then looking at downsizing that rubber is definitely a great option. A skinny and lightweight tire with minimalist tread pattern in a hard compound will roll a lot faster than its soft compound aggressive pattern brother. Then when it comes to keeping speed in those wheels, the whole rotating mass is a lot lower, as is the resistance, and in turn will make your life easier to maintain speed under your own power. If you're riding on a more hard pack trail or tarmac, you can see this further improved by raising your tire pressure by a few PSI. Riding position is definitely key when it comes to beating that speed limiter. If you're sat bolt upright on your bike, you're basically acting like a big sail, which won't cut through the wind and therefore adding resistance and therefore making more speed harder to get. You need to think about roadie position when you're on your e-bike if you want to get fast. Tuck down nice and low and cut through that wind. This also applies to clothing too. If you've got a big jacket on, which is all flapping around, or a big hood that acts like a big parachute, basically. So think about tighter fitting clothing, and we're not talking about Lycra here, to get the most out of your speed and beat that speed limiter. 
If you're riding your e-mountain bike at a gravity assisted bike park, or maybe you're using your bike as your personal uplift at your local downhill trails, then you'll often find yourself above that speed limiter straight away as soon as you drop in on the trail. Now this is where you need to use the weight of the bike and the grip available to your advantage and really get that flow on and keep the momentum in the wheels. If you do all that correctly, you'll find that an e-bike is gonna be faster down the trail than a standard mountain bike, as we recently found out at Fort William. So at the end of it, what's the rush? If it's something you enjoy, why rush doing it? Surely you wanna take your time. And if you are constantly battling against that speed limiter, then maybe you need to ask yourself, have you got the right tool for the job? Maybe a road bike could be the answer and a bit of Lycra. But we'd love to hear from you guys how you've got around those problems of beating your speed limiter. And I don't want you to say you've de-restricted your bike, you naughty boys. Uh, get involved in the comments box down below. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. And make sure you check out the EMBN merch shop and hit that subscribe button.